What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the LA Report with your co host, Eris Morrison, Lynn Joe Kilo. Yes, sir. Yes, we yes, have sir. It. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode with us. We have a very special guest back by popular demand, our very own Natalia Fuller. How are you doing today, ma'am? Hey guys, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for inviting me back. We had a good time the first time, so I'm excited to see what the questions are looking like this time around. Oh, the questions are definitely popping because we have some very uh, recent uh, recent event news that will tie into a lot of the questions that we were uh, actually asked this time. So I'm excited to hear your expert opinion on it. Um, but I did want to just briefly go back over your bio just so for our list, our listeners who didn't actually get a chance to catch you on our last episode or last season, um, actually have a better idea of who you are and why you're qualified to give us the details on the, uh, the questions that we have for you today. Um, so really quickly, Dr. Fuller obtained her undergraduate degree in psychology with a minor in neuroscience and theater from Westland College. Um, she got her MA from Walden University, specializing in children, adolescent counseling, and sex education. She holds a, med a medical degree from Washington University of Health and Science. She's certified as a sex therapist by the American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists through Modern Sex Therapy, through the Modern Sex Therapy Institute. As a doctor and sex therapist, she has expertise and experience working with a wide range of sexual and relationship issues. Because that's what we're going to be getting into talking about tonight. <laughs> uh, she specializes hey. in, 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 in infidelity in couples. Woo, that's a, oh, look at that right there, right off the back. <laughs> sexual dysfunction, anxiety, <laughs> and sexual compulsivity. There is literally nothing that Ms. Fuller, Dr. Fuller, excuse me, um, cannot touch on that will definitely um, provide clarity in a lot of different areas. And so without further ado, we will get right into question time. Um, Linjo, would you like to go first on, uh, with some of the questions that you receive, my friend? Yes, indeed. Thank you for that intro, Brother Eris. We really appreciate it, man. Uh, first question that I got, uh, I'm not sure we touched on the last episode, last time we, we, we all spoke, but we can tap into it right now. So the question is, can you describe, or I'm sorry, it's not really a question, but the first response was, mm -hmm. can you describe the different ways that women come? And can you explain the difference between an orgasm and simply coming. Okay, so it's so fun. I bet this question was from a man, wasn't it? Nope. <laughs> really, it was from a female. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised because I get this question all the time, like the stages of orgasm. So, I mean, orgasms and come is the same thing. I mean, it's just another word. Um, so, but there are different types of orgasms that you can have. So you have the clitoral orgasm. These often feel, they're felt on the surface of the body. So you're getting like that tingly feeling along your skin and even in your brain. Um, then you have vaginal. So those orgasms are deeper in the body and they can easily be felt by the person that's penetrating. Um, so you're going to feel pretty much your vaginal walls will get that pulsating feeling. Then there's anal. Um, surprisingly, a lot of women are scared to try anal sex, but a lot of women report that do try anal sex, they report a higher um, orgasm level when they do anal sex. So it's like 44% of women have better orgasms when they do anal. Sure. Um, and then you have a combination um, between vaginal, the G spot and the clitoris can all be stimulated at the same time. And that tends to result in a more explosive, that movie style orgasm that people like to see 50 shades of gray. Um, and then you have a lot of, uh, erogenous zones and that's like lesser known parts of the body that people forget about, like the ears. There's a lot of nerves, um, in the ear. So, and it's very sensitive because the ear is so small. So the nipples, the neck, even the elbows, 
everyone's always surprised when I talk about the elbows, but I'm like, just kiss somebody or lick somebody on their elbows. And it's, it's a thin layer of skin. It's going to tingle. Um, the knees also can cause a very pleasurable reaction when kissed and played with. Um, so orgasm and coming is essentially the same thing, but there are different types of orgasms. Like I just mentioned, orgasm types. Well, we appreciate no, that. No, I think no. that, um, <laughs> I think the most interesting thing that I got out of that was, you know, for you really freaky people out there, um, you can start licking and kissing elbows and knees. Just make sure that they got lotion on them. <laughs> right. Make sure it's clean. And, you know, you also have to understand, you know, the stages that lead to an orgasm. Um, we call it sexual response cycle. And that's excitement, you know, initially being turned on. Then we call it plateau, which is a repetitive motion that feels pleasurable then you have that orgasm that burst of pleasure and release and then the resolution is the refractory period okay mm. very interesting so are there, do you think that um that men i don't say men you think that people oftentimes skip over steps trying to rush to get the orgasm instead of trying to enjoy the process leading up to your, to your orgasm Absolutely. And that's why I'm such a big um, advocate for intimacy and romance, because I tell people all the time, or orgasms won't come without communication. In any kind of sexual play, communication is key, you know, and when I say communication, I'm not saying having a full blown conversation, but just that sexy bedroom talk, you know, and even texting your man before he gets home that leads up to that, that foreplay. A lot of times people really forget sex is an art. It really is, you know, and anyone can be good at sex, but you really have to be willing to have those key, those key components. Mm. So what would you say is the best way to help, um, you know, I would say, I would say women in this, in this particular instance to, you know, become better at sex talk. Cause I, I've come across some women that say, oh, I'm not good at talking dirty, or I don't like talking dirty. Uh, like, how do you, you know, ease that ease that burden and have to improve their skills in that way? It's so funny because I'm actually writing an ebook right now um, about that, um, about how women can feel comfortable being confident, being sexy, and how to spice up, you know, your sex life and talk dirty. Um, mm -hmm. I would say if you feel uncomfortable right now. Um, watching or listening to porn will help um, because they talk dirty a lot on porn. So that'll give you a lot of ideas on how to start. And mm -hmm. then also you have to know what your partner likes because some men, you know, they don't like it too raunchy and then some do. So also what is your partner like? You know, what does he respond well to? And it might take a little bit of practice at first. It's going to feel awkward. So maybe start with a text if you don't feel comfortable actually saying it and see his response, you know, because I think if you initially just say it, you might not say it with that sex appeal that you think that you're saying it like in your head. So it might sound like a little weird, but practicing your tone of voice, um, what you'll sound like when you say it to yourself. And then even when you're masturbating, talk dirty to yourself because that's practicing. Mm. Gotcha. So I got a question for you. Um, and I appreciate, we definitely appreciate that response. Hopefully that answered, um, which hopefully that answered you all's question out there, um, understanding the difference between coming into orgasm. Um, but based off your experience, Dr. Fuller, how common are like sexual difficulties in relationships? And like, if you could say, Very like, you know, what are your, what is, what's some of the contributing factors to those sexual difficulties that seem to pop up in relationships? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so it's actually very common. Um, every couple that I've worked with has had at least some sort of difficulty um, in their sex life, whether that was communicating, whether that was um, being on one page about what they wanted sexually and how to express what they wanted. Um, so it is very common. So if anyone in the audience is going through that, just know that you're not alone. Almost every couple that I've counseled has went through that. And then what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. 
I uh, just you, and I think you've kind of touched on it. Just kind of what are some of those uh, contributing factors? Like you said, I think you mentioned one just as far as just being a lack of communication. Um, but yeah, they just wanted to know, like, what are some of those factors that might have contributed to those difficulties? I would say a lack of communication is definitely number one. Um, I've realized in my work that people are very scared to vocally say what they want in the bedroom, whether it's men, whether it's women asking for a threesome or they want to break, incorporate toys or they want to try a new position or they want to um, get into voyeurism and go to an orgy party. I mean, people get really nervous about expressing how they feel sexually to their partner mm. that's that i could see that being the case i mean do you think that um that's that like i could definitely see that being the case and seeing as though that rejection or that 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 not i wouldn't even say rejection i think that's the thought of someone looking at you and probably feeling like what you want or what you're thinking about doing is is, is such ex an extreme for what they're used to that that probably right. would definitely heighten like them being like, I'd rather keep that or some hush hush. But to your point, that that'll cause some of those difficulties and in, in being unhappy. So I can I can see how that can play out. Damn. Yeah, and I tell people all the time, if you feel like you can't communicate sexually with your partner, then you either need to get a new partner that you can communicate with. Or you need to work on some things yourself because you, when you have sex, there should be, you should feel sexy. Your partner should feel sexy and there should definitely feel a level of confidence in what you're doing. So if something is missing, then you have to figure out, okay, what exactly is missing? Do I not feel confident in myself? Am I lacking self-esteem? You know, why do I feel like I can't be open and honest about what I want? Agree. Hopefully, um, hopefully that helps. Um, our, our audience out there, uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I have a quick side side question based off of that, like, because I've, through my experiences, I've come across women who, you know, are a bit intimidated, I, I guess, when it comes to like talking about sex. So mm -hmm. what are some recommendations, you know, that you would give to help ease that, ease that conversation? I think sometimes, you know, at least within myself, looking at my, at my past, like maybe I, maybe I was a bit too direct, too, too firm with what I, with, I, with what I wanted. Maybe if I would have massaged it or said it a different way or said it was with, with a little bit more tact, then, you know, it, it could have been received better. But, um, but how, how would you recommend that someone will go, go about expressing themselves or their partner, will, one, not feel discouraged and two, will then feel inclined to want to, you know, fulfill those needs? So I would say first, it's okay if you do feel uncomfortable because we, the society that we live in has, especially with women, has made it to where we can't feel comfortable in our skin, especially being sexually liberated. Because if you look at anything from masturbation, it's always like, oh yeah, it's fine for men to masturbate. It's fine for men to, have, um, to watch porn. But then when women talk about sex or they enjoy sex, it's almost shunned, you know? And even still today, you know, a lot of women, even on Instagram, oh, well, she's being too sexual. She's being too this. She's being too that. There's a time and a place for everything. But at the end of the day, you shouldn't repress someone for how they feel about sex or them wanting to have sex because that's what we were created on this earth to do, to procreate. And you have to have sex to do that. So um, if you feel some kind of way um, and you feel like you're not comfortable talking about sex I think first realizing you know why you feel uncomfortable talking about sex is it because you feel like you're going to be judged for your sexual desires or do you think your partner thinks that whatever your request is is strange um and do you feel intimidated because we don't have classes to teach us you know this is how you feel comfortable with talking about sex or this is how you express our needs that's something we kind of learn on our own through trial and error I always tell women to approach it as if it's just like a regular conversation. And of course, it's going to make you feel vulnerable. Um, but try coming from a place of curiosity and, you know, just saying, hey, you know, this is something that I'm interested in or I would like to give this a try. Um, or what do you think about this if we tried this? 
and then see what your partner's response is. And even try talking to your friends about it first and kind of practicing on them, you know, because I know there's a lot of cultural taboos, um, but sometimes a lot of times you can feel open and honest um, with your friends. And like I said, even texting first, you know, letting that be an icebreaker, like, oh, I want to talk to you. I want to try something kinky tonight, you know, and then when he gets home, that's going to pique his interest. So then when he gets home, he's going to be like, what's that kinky thing you want to talk about? And, and then go from there. I, I like that answer. I like that answer. So I would sum that up by saying, like, for me, I, I, what I just took away from that is, is definitely, you know, dog, you might want to rephrase it. And th- like she said, peak the curiosity, you know, like by doing that, I think it takes a little bit less off of the, you know, let, uh, takes a little bit off of it and puts it in a better situation, a better space of them receiving it. I actually I right. agree with that. That's, that's actually a good point. And if it's a guy, um, cause guys, I feel like sometimes can be very aggressive sometimes when they want something. So it depends on the type of female that you're dealing with. So I would say with a guy, definitely make sure that you have that conversation with her first. If you want, depending on what you want to try. A lot of men always ask me, well, how do I ask my partner for a threesome? That's like the main thing I always get. Yeah. Um, and so it's something along those lines, because typically men don't want to bring toys in the bedroom. And a lot of women are open to different positions, but most men, they're like, well, how do I ask for, I want to bring another female in the bedroom. And a lot of times, honestly, if she didn't mention that she's open to a threesome, um, I wouldn't mention it to her. Like if you guys are watching a porn or something and you say something like, oh, what do you think about that? And she's going to be like, what do you think about what? <laughs> so you have to be very careful when you're asking for something like a threesome. Um, If you have that level of comfort with her, like you guys are married or you guys have been dating long-term and you know, she's open to a lot of things, then it's okay to be like, Hey babe, you know, what do you think about a threesome? Um, But if you push it too much, you know, then she's going to be like, Oh, is that all you want? So be very careful when asking about a threesome or, you know, you have to know your partner, read them, engage, you know, what you think their response is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. I, I, I definitely agree with that for sure. 100%. No, that's a big fact. So I have another question and this will lead into um, some uh, current events. <laughs> that mm-hmm. Oh Lord. <laughs> so do you think, relationships can survive through all or most adverse sexual conditions you know what honestly it depends on the relationship and the foundation that they have I've seen some crazy situations um, in my counseling career some that I didn't even think would last Um, but what I realized was one it depends on if that couple actually wants to be in a relationship, because sometimes you have people together that don't even love each other anymore, don't even want to work it out anymore. They're just both tired and they're just there for the kids or because they don't feel they're older. They don't feel like going back out into the dating world. Then you have situations where they don't have a solid foundation. And when the foundation is rocky to begin with, then easily there's going to be cracks in that foundation. So I would really say it really depends at the end of the day, how hard you want to work for your relationship. Because like I said, I've seen the craziest situations and I mean, absolutely crazy where I would be like, there's no way I would stay in that situation, but they loved each other so much and they were willing to work through. That's why they came to counseling. That's why they um, saw individual counseling, which I think is really important for people to go to counseling on their own, not only with their partner, but actually go by them by themselves excuse me so it really just depends on how bad you want that relationship to work at the end of the day i appreciate that and 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 so kind of using that as a as an intro what what do you think about this whole Derek Jackson situation? I knew you was gonna ask me about that. Yeah, I mean, it's because yeah. it's uh, it's it's so interesting, right? Like, I mean, from afar, not being you know having a very ignorant and limited perspective, just based upon what I see, um, you know, I'm looking at more so from his wife's vantage point, um, you know, kind of sticking through the relationship and seeing as far as 
um, you know, someone shared with me today, like she, she's kind of obsessed or was obsessed with watching the videos that he was uh, having sex with these other women and how she, she's, you know, it's like that clearly is, excuse my language, fucked her mind up. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But, you know, just understanding like, you know, that the face that they have at least put on or that she's put on at the end of the day to try to like move past all of that. But while admitting like kind of like her head still gone, you know, around the fact that he cheated on her and, you know, he has all these videos that she's watching. It's just, you know, un like, I would love to get your, your, your uh, expert opinion as far as just what you think about that situation. And I mean, you can really let us know what you think from top to bottom about it, but it's 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 really fascinating on multiple levels and we can talk about some more of that <laughs> I'm, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest i don't know much about that situation so i've never really watched his videos for one i don't follow him on social media um so i've only actually how i found out was like through little duval's page <laughs> and i was like wait what's going on with this um <laughs> So I only heard, I didn't watch it on the shade room yet. So I, everyone's been talking about it. So I got to go back because my friends even sent it to me and they wanted my opinion on it. So I'm actually going to watch it tonight after we get off um, oh. because I haven't seen the videos or anything. Sorry. I just only heard that he issued an apology and then she made a video as well. Um, it's, it's a wild stream of events. Um, but this, just as a little background. So basically from what I understand, this guy is... Uh, He's one of these guys that gets on the internet and who has made a you know very profitable social media yes. career off. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that's what he does or it, it, what he was doing. And so for me, just as a guy from my vantage point, I always feel like so. My stance on that is like I respect anybody that like my advice would always come from this perspective. Hey, look, fellas, this is what I do with my lady. This is what she likes. This is what things that I can do to basically explain to you how I keep my woman happy. It may work for you, it may not work for you. Whereas his vantage point, he's always, you know, like that, 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 that kind of light that he put himself under to be like, yo, like ladies, this is why you shouldn't deal with this type of man. And like, you know, having really this firsthand advice with it. Um, mm -hmm. it quite... And then he turns out to be that type of man. Oh man, he, he... <laughs> man, look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> hate hate is a strong word. I'm not gonna say hate, but I really dislike Derek Jackson. Mm. But but and why do you dislike him? Okay, that's why, right? And I'll and and I'll say it from a very mature standpoint. I don't want to be like you know childish with this. So some of the stuff he says, like in in general. It, it it does it is good information sometimes, right? Okay. What I dislike about him is that he postures himself in this holier than thou uh, light, as if this is what real men do, and I'm that real man. But that always came across slimy and and disingenuous. So like something in my mind will always say like this dude is, is fake as hell, and because I also noticed that it, his page is mainly you know to help men become more mature and become less childish with how they did with women, right? But mm -hmm. the majority of his audience is women. So I'm like, you have a whole platform based on helping men become better for women, but men don't listen to you. That tells me how slimy you are to, to, from the jump. And it just so happened that he was caught cheating. And I, I, I didn't know about, about the videos or him recording himself having sex with other women, but you know, I'm not here, here to judge, but when you put yourself in that kind of, in that, that kind of space, you have to conduct yourself in a certain way. And because mm -hmm. of that, that's why I, I dislike them. I, I don't like people that are disingenuous and you know try to come off as something that they're not. And then on top of that, with the video, I only, only watched it once, but you know, you, you probably watch it later and, and you'll get your own opinion about it. But when you watch the video, you can tell that his wife's body language is very uncomfortable. And his mm -hmm. is that is, is as if he's trying to posture himself to to make us believe what what he did was not as bad as what it actually is. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And, Sounds and like narcissism. I'm telling you to 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 the highest degree. 
and she felt very uncomfortable. And like, I got the sense that that's the dynamic within their relationship. Everything is about him and what he says goes. This, mm. new, this news broke about three, four days ago. And next thing you know, y'all talk, y'all are doing a video with him saying, yeah, I had sex with other women right in front of your face. He didn't even give her the, 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 the opportunity to at least put herself in the best light where she she didn't have any makeup on, she had on a bonnet. She looked like she was just like pulled. Yeah, the- I saw like, that. Like, yeah, she come, looked come, like come, she come, was yeah. depressed. I'm yeah, telling you. yeah, she did. I did see that. Um, I'll say this: one, we have this issue in our society where we glamorize people like him. I've never really seen his video, so I can't speak too much on. I'm just speaking on the situation as a whole outside of looking in, um, because I don't really follow guys like that. Um, I don't think any man or woman is perfect and that has nothing to even do with cheating. I just think that everyone technically has like skeletons in their closet. So when you come off as this, have having this healthy relationship platform, knowing you don't have that, then you have to keep it real. You have to own up to your mistakes. So him pretty much selling lies to women when he was, cause I know, I think he was the one that had used to wear like that black man don't cheat shirt. Uh, I don't know if he, he did he was, okay but know. he was always pushing the narrative you know that like women men shouldn't women, cheat yeah. yeah and women need to be with this sort of man Absolutely. um so my thing is you know ladies we do have to be careful um and you really shouldn't be so worried about other people's relationship that you're eating up everything that everything that they say so I think that's why a lot of women are probably upset, it seems like, uh, because they literally took everything that he said to heart. And you can't, I mean, these people are human beings. No one is perfect. No man or woman is perfect. So at the end of the day, you know, you have to take everything with a grain of salt and focus on your own relationship and what work works best for your relationship. So that's unfortunate. I really feel bad for his wife because I did see a picture of her with her bonnet on I'm like why did he let her come on camera like that or why did she why did she even want to come on camera like that but she's probably so what I saw was a depressed woman a beaten down woman um because no woman honestly in her right mind would want to go on camera like that Mm -mm. there's some things about his wife though that you like I, I got, you know, people was breaking this down for me. Like they got like four one one on like his wife, and you know, not shifting it to her. But again, that's why I was asking about relationships and how they survive. But like, there's a whole dynamic with her that is, uh, you uh mean? very, very interesting to say the least. Just, just in, re- just in respect to, like I said, she, she apparently sees these videos and like, like. It goes back to like another question that we can kind of get into, like women who compare themselves to other women that their man might have previously been with. So in other words, if y'all got with a new woman and she saw some of my exes and she was like, well, you know, comparing herself or her body to my exes' mm-hmm. bodies and then trying to figure out, well, I wonder how it was when you guys had sex and those type of things, you know, like what, what, what can women do to not, av- to avoid that? And, and we could, you know, I don't want to just keep shifting it to women. Let's make this a gender neutral conversation with regard, with right. that, you know, what can men do that? How to not that, compare. How not, that, like, basically how not to compare when dealing with a relationship. So, and and that all goes back to just having confidence in yourself. Like, don't torture yourself by comparing yourself to his past. If you're going to be with somebody, their past is their past. You know, focus on yourself and how you feel in your relationship, because that's what's the most important thing. Enjoying your time with your boyfriend or girlfriend. And remember that you're very important to each other and you've chosen to be with each other mm-hmm. over everyone else. So, you know, an ex should not get in the way of that and I know you know it's hard because especially with Instagram nowadays you can go and look up who he used to date this and that um and so that doubt starts to creep in and you start wanting to know more about him or her what they were like how the relationship ended and I do feel in most cases it is important to know how a relationship has ended 
um, just to know how your partner handles certain situations, but it's unhealthy for you to pretty much compare yourself. So one, you're going to make yourself insecure. Who cares if she's prettier, or skinnier? He's with you for a reason. So by comparing yourself to him or her, this is for men and women, you'll start to think he or she's better than you or has a nice figure. And that's only going to lead to self-doubt. So your partner has clearly chosen you for a reason. Mm. And don't damage your own self-esteem. Like for what? Mm. You know, stop looking on Instagram. Stop looking on Facebook. Two, you're going to bring doubt into your relationship. If you compare yourself to, you know, your ex, you're going to, clearly start to feel insecure you're going to start to think your boyfriend is crazy for being with you and not with them or you know you're going to have doubt and it's going to make only make your relationship worse because it's eventually going to come up Mm -hmm. so comparing yourself to people in general honestly is a bad idea and it's one of the worst traits to have is really Mm self-comparison um because at the end of the day that's only going to lead to insecurities making yourself paranoid So I always tell people, if you're starting to do that, just remember, it will start to negatively affect your relationship. And you're essentially torturing yourself by comparing something that has happened in the past. So focus on the future, which is you and your partner, and focus on what you, your focus really should be on how you can please them, how you can have a healthy relationship, how you can learn their love languages or each other's love languages and be a well-rounded couple. That should be your number one thing. Mm. I like that. I like that. Big facts, big facts, big facts, super facts. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, interesting because when I monitor or not monitor, but when I looked at their the dynamic, what I saw in that video, and I knew we were going to come record, I was wondering to myself, I was like, I wonder how their sex life is. I wonder, like, mm. like, like I, I wonder if their sex life is the reason why he decided to go cheat. Not saying it's her fault. I don't want to put past no blame, but I understand that sometimes as a man, our curiosity sparks when we, when we become bored. And when things become monotonous and I wonder mm. and I wonder because based on, on what I saw on her page she's a very very religious like very yeah. religious so I wonder because of how she grew up in that religious mind mind state how she's not privy to a lot of things sexually or she may th- find them uncomfortable or talk about whatever the case is and I wonder how much how much of a lack of patience Derek Jackson had and said you know what I love my wife but I'm then my thing is don't marry her I get so, t- I'm going to be honest, that narr- narrative to me is so frustrating right. um, because I've heard it time and time again where men come to counseling and they're like, my wife's boring in bed or she doesn't, but she's always been this way. So my thing is like, well, why did you marry her? If you knew that she was a good woman, but that sex was so important to you that you were going to get bored and have to cheat, don't marry her. Like you have to, people have to be real with themselves. And that's what shows me that people aren't honest with himself she's probably a good woman and he married her because she was a good woman and she you know was going to be faithful to him she was going to be a good mother to his children but you have to be honest how if you know that you have a high sex drive and a high libido and you like for your woman to dress sexy because what I saw in the video I mean that did not look like a woman that um, unfortunately took like a lot of pride in her appearance. And I hate to say that because I don't know her, but mm-hmm. any woman that does take pride in her appearance would not have been on camera like that. So that's why I'm saying that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to judge her, but I tell women all the time, you know, when you get married or you're in a relationship, you do have to keep things spicy. And that's just, it's just the truth. You can say whatever you want. And some men are going to cheat regardless because mm-hmm. they're dogs like that. Mm-hmm. But as a woman, I hear it time and time. And I'm just telling you what I hear from the men. They always complain about how the sex gets born. The sex should not get born. There are so many different, different positions to try, so many different places to have sex, you know, toys to bring in. There's couches that you can get for sex, you know, um, just keeping keeping ourselves up, making sure that we look good, you know, keeping our bodies nice, just being happy, having confidence, being sexy in who you are. Those things are all important. So my thing is, if he knew, which he probably did, because I'm sure he sampled the goods before they got married, because from what I heard, they had a kid before she was pregnant before they were actually married. Um, Because I saw their wedding picture. She was pregnant in the wedding picture. 
Okay. So my thing is he already knew that maybe she wasn't what he wanted in the bed. Yeah. So you just have to, men, you have to be honest about that. And that's where that communication comes in and saying, you know what, can we do this? Can we try this? Because everyone might be terrible at sex at the beginning. Sex, like I said, is an art. It takes practice. You have to actually be interested in having se- a good sex life to have good sex. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm kinda... oh, oh, sorry, bro. I, 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 don't know, I, I was going to say that's, that's very real, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with, with, with Kevin Samuels, right? <laughs> right. And there's yes, this, I'm very familiar with him. Sure, and there's this, there's this, this, this phrase that's been circulating the past few weeks of the high value man. And yesterday, in the midst of all this news, he had a YouTube live that was titled "High Value Men Cheat," mm. and basically he was breaking it down as to, you know, women have to basically understand the deal that they're going to get when they deal with these men that absolutely have, that have this this certain kind of aura of themselves basically when you're dealing with a man that 90 percent of other people want you have to understand that he might want to exercise his options now, per, now personally i don't necessarily agree with that but i can i can understand how someone may may feel like that mm-hmm. now and now as, as as you said you know if a dude should just not marry his wife he doesn't want to you know deal with her, her her boring sex per se how do you how do you deal with a dude that says you know what I, i'm high value i love my wife her sex is not great but i want other options too like how do you deal with how do you combat those that feel as though they can have their cake and eat it too in this kind right. of situation you know so one i don't think i i, I actually like kevin um uh, what's it, kevin samuels is his last name i think kevin samuels i actually like him um and a lot of my friends despise him. It's so funny. But I like that he keeps it 100% real. And a lot of things that he says actually make sense. And it's the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. And I think as women, we don't always want to hear the truth. We do, but we don't. We want it to be sugarcoated in a sense. And I think that's why so many women like Derek Jackson. Um, because he was always, it seemed like, in agreement with women. Mm. And like I said, I haven't, I haven't read all... I haven't listened to all his videos, so ladies, don't come for me. But the ones that I have seen, I was just like, oh, wow, he's really landed on thick, like being, which is nothing wrong with being pro-women, but at the end of the day, you also have to be honest. And one thing I like about Kevin Samuels is he's very blunt, and I don't like his delivery, um, but I like his bluntness. Um, But what I will say is I don't feel like just because you're dating a high-value man that they necessarily have to cheat men choose to cheat women choose to cheat i'm a high high value woman a woman you know like i i have it going on but that doesn't mean i need to have two men or i want to cheat on my partner and the guy that i'm dating i would say he's a high value man but that doesn't mean that i expect him oh because he makes over six figures and he's over six foot tall and he looks like this that he's gonna cheat on me but that's also a conversation that you have to have. So I think as a man, if you that's just what you want to do, then you just need to be honest. And surprisingly, a lot of women would go for it. Like, that's the crazy thing. A lot of women really just want men to be open and honest about what they want. And men are scared sometimes to do so because they're like, oh, I got a good girl. She wouldn't go for this and that. But some women will. Some women do not mind sharing. Look at Akon. He is very successful man, and he has several girlfriends that are all in agreement with the lifestyle. So they know what it is. He explains what it is, and they're in agreement with it. So that's my thing. If you're choosing to be in a polyamorous relationship, because that's pretty much what it is, having more than one girlfriend, you just need to be honest about what you want. I don't think it has anything to do, because I've dated guys that, were very successful and they only wanted one woman and i've dated other guys that were very successful and they were like you know what i want more than one woman mm. Mm. so it's all on the man that's tough that's, no, tough. that's facts though i mean you, you... Yeah, it's, it's facts it's facts. i agree 110 percent. everything you say was 100 100 facts <laughs> You definitely gotta be honest with yourself and, and 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 with your partner whoever you're dealing with because i mean 
I agree with you. If you just keep it a stack, it tends to always work out in the best situation for you. And even if it doesn't, to be the best the best situation for you, sometimes is you not dealing with that person that you would deal with. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. And some women are gonna they're gonna go for that. I know women that are like, you know what? I want this type of lifestyle, and that's what I agree with Kevin Samuels it's the lifestyle more so that women want because I know I saw an interview with him it's so funny my uh, my boyfriend actually sent me an interview with him today and he was talking about how he had asked this one girl like okay would you date a plumber and she was like no I would never date a plumber and he was like plumbers make good money and I agree with him that a lot of women they do they just want the lifestyle they want the luxury because if you really want a man that makes six figures there's plenty of jobs besides NFL players and rappers that make six figures you can get you a doctor you can get you a plumber you can get you an engineer like Mm -hmm. lawyer you know there's a ton of men that make well over six figures that you can date but a plumber doesn't sound sexy me telling my friends oh yeah I date a plumber they're gonna be like what you know it doesn't because most people don't know how much plumbers make plumbers make really good money you know what I'm saying so he was right in that instance so I think as women pinpointing what you want is important and why you want those things who are is it because you really want those things or is Instagram telling you that you want those things and you looking at other rappers girlfriends and saying oh you know I want this I want to live that lifestyle I want to be on private jets and being honest do you are you really the type of woman that a man is going to want to spend that type of money on Like, are you going to be able to attract that type of man? Because that's another thing that he talks about that I do have to agree with. Like when you're in that circle, like I'm a doctor, so I'm around other doctors. I see their wives. My colleagues are a lot older than me. I see their wives. A lot of their wives are not doctors. They're like school teachers, but they're drop dead gorgeous. I haven't had one, well, maybe a couple of my colleagues, but most of my colleagues do not date other doctors. A lot of the women that they date are not as successful as them or even successful in their own right. Mm. They're dating stay-at-home moms. They're dating, but she's drop-dead gorgeous. They're dating models. You know, they don't care. She doesn't have to be a doctor. So if you're not, if your career is not all the way together, are your looks all the way together? Mm. That's a big fact. You know, that's hey, hey, Lenjo, play that sound again. I need we need that alert again. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that was I a- mean, we just gotta be honest with ourselves. We really just gotta be that's what it's all about. Be because every woman wants to say she's a 10, but I mean, we're not all tens. Hey, we're just not. You have to use, and that's okay. That's okay. Use what you have that's- to the best of your ability. If yeah. If you're intelligent, put that at the forefront. If it's your looks, put that at the forefront. So, I mean, that's all you can pretty much do. No, I agree with that. that that's, a, that's so facts because I think that's, not to keep regurgitating, but I think, again, man, like, if you're not keeping it real with yourself, like, I mean, like, I always say, like, that's the toughest thing to not be able to do, right? Because you have, like, when you lie to yourself, like, to me, that's like, it's like, damn, like, you know, you, you got to go to sleep. Like, you know, that you lying. Like, that, that's why mm-hmm. I've been going talking about Derek Jackson, whoever's like, you not keeping it real with yourself is such a, it's like, that's the worst thing you can do. You playing on your own self. <laughs> like, yep. You know, so, I mean, the whole Kevin Samuel shit, just to touch back on that, because I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's a lot of things that he says that I agree with from a just straight up, like, is what he's saying first of all I'm, I'm a proponent of like more so logic more so than anything like yeah we are emotional beings but like if some shit makes sense it just makes sense no matter how you feel about it like you know right it is what it is and that's where he comes from as far as what he tells a lot of people i think a lot of people as we had so many conversations about him early on where it was like well he should he should try to massage what he's saying to make it more you know, digestible for these women. And it's like that, but see, doing that shit is not going to help benefit them and understand in the long run. Their, yeah, understanding what their reality is. And like it goes for all of because this is the thing though. According to Kevin Samuels, there's not a high a lot of high value men. You know, so for niggas, for guys that's out there who feel, you know, like it's all about him playing on women, Kevin Samuels like, look, if you ain't making six stacks, six stacks of uh a year, 
if you ain't got certain qualifications, you ain't a high value man. So you like, he like, why you just can't date like an average dude? Like, you know, a dude that make like 40 racks or, you know, whatever you got. Like, and it's, it's one of those situations for me where it's like, you actually listen to the, listen to him. I, I agree with you. I don't like his delivery. I think, it, but that's his entertainment value though. I respect, like, I understand right. from that standpoint. He has to, like, you can't just keep it real. You got to keep it real with some flair for, in order for people to come talk about you. And that's kind of what he has to do. But I mean, at the end of the day, I agree with, mm-hmm. I agree with a, 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 everything that you Yeah, do. and my thing is, you know, the women, they're asking for the advice. Facts. I'm sorry, you were breaking it up there. What'd you say? Yeah, I, no, I said facts. Sorry. What'd you say, bro? Can you guys hear me? Oh, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're asking for the advice. So, I mean, if you're gonna, I honestly, I don't think, I, I, <laughs> I personally do not think that I would call in and get advice from him um, because you're really <laughs> setting yourself up to get your feelings hurt. Exactly. I mean, if you really want the truth, you, you know, women, we typically know what our true number is as far as on a scale of one to 10. And we know what type of men approach us we know the type of men we've typically dated. So my thing is, is you don't need that. You don't need to go on his show and embarrass yourself when all you got to do is look within yourself and be honest with yourself. Like, do I need to lose some weight? Is my wardrobe outdated? You know, do I have all these kids by different men? If I was, I always, an exercise I do with my clients is if you had to date you, Ooh. from the outside looking in would you really date yourself would you date a man that's exactly like you that's, 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 and that's, a lot of women are like mm, you know what i'm saying and then they're thinking twice fellas we got to do the same too like i said i don't i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to, to, to be one-sided fellas we got to do the same things too because I mean, it goes both ways. I, I just think that it, it really does come down to just- Absolutely, just, it goes both ways. Absolutely. You got to keep it real with yourself. Um, and you kind of touched on like some of my other questions because I was going to say like, um, you know, how does, just to get back more so on the, on the you know, just what you do, um, like how, how would you say the benefit of sex therapy, you know, how does it benefit uh, for long-term couples to your point, who may have lost that spark. And I think you did touch on that. I just wanted to get the question there um, just so our audience members can be, make sure they be like, you ain't asking my question. So, um, but I think you did mention some of those ways just in terms of like toys in the bedrooms and different things of that nature. But could you give us your three, your top three surefire ways to keep things hot in the bedroom? Absolutely. So first, sex therapy um, is not just about karma sutra, guys. I know that sounds more fun than what it really is. Um, But we're designed, you know, to help individuals, couples address medical, psychological, personal or interpersonal factors impacting their sexual um, satisfaction. So before I even get into the sex, um, we talk about past traumas. We talk about your childhood. We get into your adolescence. So it's not as, I mean, it's fascinating because I love what I do, but it's people think that I teach like sex positions all day and I'm teaching women how to give fellatio, but it's really not all about that. Um, I mean, we go into low confidence, lack of response to sexual um, stimulus, inability to reach orgasms, inability to control sexual behavior, sexual thoughts. You know, we, we look at all of that. So because sexual dysfunction is quite common. 43% of women and 31% of men report experiencing some type of sexual dysfunction during their lifetime, whether that's erectile dysfunction, low libido, or just lack of interest in sex. So that's for one. I tell people sex therapy is for everyone. Um, It's a type of psychotherapy. So we're treating different conditions, talking through your experiences, your worries, and your feelings. So do not be ashamed to come to sex therapy because it is more than just karma sutra. Um, And then the other question you asked was, what was it? Top three? Yeah, your top. Spice of the sex life? Yeah, to keep things spicy yeah what's the top three surefire ways to, to keep oh gosh um i have so many so 
I have more than three. Um, one, you want to update your foreplay. Foreplay is more than just the precursor to sex. So that's the intimacy. That's that romance. Um, and you want to build up. I love when people build up to the intimacy. I think we've gotten away from intimacy. It's like a lost art. So you want to build up to it. And that's those little sexy texts that you give him in the morning, in the afternoon, you know, men and women. This is for men and women. Men, you can also send sexy text messages as well. You know, oh, I can't wait to tear that ass up tonight. Something, Mm -hmm. you know, you can whatever way you want to say it Mm -hmm. Um, because then it makes things exciting. Um, trying something new like oil, oil massages or playing a fun game. There's a ton of sex games. My favorite thing is to tell couples to go to the sex store together and pick out lingerie together, have the guy pick out lingerie for the woman, have the woman pick out lube for the guy. That's always a fun thing for couples to do. Um, Implementing gratitude. I know that sounds really weird, but when you're happy sexually, it's pretty plausible that you'll be in your relationship as well. So if your sex is suffering, you need to find ways to improve communication and to really get closer to your partner. And the easiest way to do that is to cultivate gratitude. You know, thank them for little things like doing dishes or cooking. Um, You would be surprised at how people, when they feel more, um, when they feel like their partner is showing them gratitude and really interested in what they're doing, it transfers over to the bedroom. Mm. And then get out of the bedroom, actually, you know, get out and do things, you know, go on dates. I know we're in quarantine. Well, some of us are in quarantine. Atlanta's wide open, but (laughs) um, going out to the park, different things like that. Yeah, we are wide open. Adding sex toys. Oh, my God, guys, I cannot. Adding sex toys. Yeah. And then don't be afraid of quickies. I know that was more than three, but don't be afraid of quickies. Sex doesn't have to be always in the bedroom with lit candles and rose petals. Sometimes you can get it on in the laundry room with the it actually feels really good when it's vibrating um, the uh, the dryer. So (laughs) it needs to be exciting. It should be spontaneous. It doesn't have to go all night long. It can just be fun. Do it while the kids are taking a nap or something. And then, ladies, wear lingerie. Mm. Yeah. All right, listen. Yeah. Sure. Lingerie is the key. Like, <laughs> for, for me. <laughs> yeah, like, most guys like lingerie. And I think sometimes we forget to wear it, you know, but it doesn't have to be awkward, you know, just something that you're comfortable with. There's so many different types of lingerie. You know, even Rihanna's came out with a line, which is really dope and affordable. So even on Amazon, you can get cute little lingerie. So yeah, get some lingerie. Have fun with it. Sex is supposed to be fun. I'm t- yes. <laughs> Do what she said, please. <laughs> get on <laughs> Because sometimes I don't want to see just your bare body. Mm-hmm. I see the intricate details within the, uh, the uh, lingerie lining on, on the bra or on the like, on like the actual like pant, like, you know, so like, like the flower detail that should be up. Mm. That's hot, you know what I'm saying? All right, there yeah. you go. Or wearing his okay. t-shirt. Word, 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 word. But don't take my hoodie though, I need my hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, oh yeah, we love stealing hoodies. You know what? Okay, so we just got some, we just, we just got four random questions just now from one of our audiences uh, off of Instagram. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm about to blast them to you real quick. All right. Okay. Before we end. Okay. So, first question Does anal sex increase the rate of bacterial infections? So, um, it doesn't increase anything, but yes, you can get STDs from anal sex. So you still have to be careful. Use um, lube is one. Water-based lube is gonna be your best friend for anal sex. You can still get STI, sexually transmitted infections, um, because the skin down there is more likely to tear during anal sex than during vaginal. So there is a greater opportunity to spread the STIs. So you want to use lube. Lube is gonna be your best friend. You're gonna wanna use condoms unless of course, you know, you feel comfortable with that person not using condoms and do what you do, but just be careful. Word, word. Thank you for that. Um, is there more or less sensitivity from a circumcised penis or an uncircumcised penis? 
You know what? There actually have not been studies um, as far as being circumcised um, or uncircumcised as far as which one is better, um, the comparison. So really when it comes to sex, there is no difference between your man being circumcised, which is being cut and uncircumcised, uncut. Um, it's just foreskin. That's all it is. Word. Um, third question. Oh, and thank you for the answer as well. Third question. Um, are uncircumcised penises more prone to give women infections? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing the only because... <laughs> No, I'm just laughing only because uh, somebody had asked me this question in their DMs uh, not too long ago. No. No. But the issue is men that have uncircumcised penis, they can have inflammation and bacteria in there if they do not clean it correctly. So... Mm. Statistically, studies show that uncircumcised men are four more times more likely to get an UTI than circumcised men. And Damn, not shit. cleaning it properly. What is going on with my shit? Because when you have that four, when a man has that foreskin over his shaft, you he has to actually pull that back. Mm. So it's typically because men, yeah, they don't know how to properly clean it. Word. All right, and that, and after this, after this 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 fourth question, I'll I'll tap back in more with you about you know that because I want to want the audience to hear or men to hear how they can clean their genital areas properly. I, yeah, because it is it is difficult to clean, so that's why it's more prone to infection. But it's honestly yeah. more prone to infection because men are not cleaning it correctly. Correct, correct. Um, last question: When do men and women have their highest sex drives? And in parentheses, meaning which age ranges? Okay, so I love this question. It's, this is such a good question. Whoever asked me this, thank you. I always like answering this question. Yeah, yeah. So your sex drive is going to change over the years, for one. And just remember, this is only statistics. So, of course, it's not for everyone. Um, so for men in their 20s, Men, testosterone is usually typically high in their 20s, and so is their sex drive. Um, now, actually, more men in their 30s right now are having issues with erectile dysfunction, and that's typically because of issues with marijuana, higher levels of drinking, different things like that. Now, women, we're more fertile in our teens to late 20s, um, but we're typically not as our sex drive isn't the strongest. So typically our, our sex drive really becomes the strongest between the ages of 27 and 45 is when more women have intense sexual fantasies. Mm. And women that hit, have menopause, a lot of women report having a high sex drive once they hit their menopause phase. Mm. Yeah, and then mm. pregnant women, I wanna say pregnant women during their second trimester, um, their libido actually is sky is skyrockets as well. Is that is that is it safe to have sex during 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 like her pregnancy? Because I mm -hmm. always always wondered. If mine, oh right? yeah, we we recommend having sex when women are pregnant more because actually when they're in their last trimester, it helps the baby come. So yeah, like when women are pregnant and they have like a couple of weeks left, we'll say walk and have sex. Mm -hmm. So. So, so for men, you know, more well endowed, does that affect it or does it doesn't, doesn't really matter? No, it doesn't affect anything. I know men always think that like when a woman is pregnant, they're, if their penis is big, they're going to hit the baby's head. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to hit the baby's oh, top of the baby's head. I don't care how big your penis is. It's not hitting the baby's head. For sure. For sure. Um, so just a tap back in before we end the show uh, about the genital wellness in terms of like you know grooming and cleaning your genital area you know i have i have a regimen that, that i do and I, I would like to tell you just to get your opinion on it um mm -hmm. let you know or let me know if i could do anything better um so number one number one i do shave but i don't shave like to um i don't shave a ball i used to do like like like, like waxing and stuff like that mm -hmm. but 
my skin is very sensitive, so I, I stopped doing that. But I do shave it, I do exfoliate. Um, and I only use like Dr. Bronner's. Uh, that stuff is amazing. Dr. Bronner's. Yeah, and, that's good. And uh, coconut oil. And that's and that's really that's really been my regimen for the past like you know two years or so. But before, I would just do anything. I would just shave it bald, use my same hair shampoo, <laughs> and then Ooh. put lotion on my dick. <laughs> you know, right? Um, but now I, I I've kind of figured I, I figured you know, I have to try to do a thing more more natural. But um, when you think that's what more men should do is do things like with the Dr. Bronner's the coconut oil, just to make sure that they're not you know affecting their woman's ph yes absolutely you i mean you your regimen is perfect yeah um it's very important what you use down there i even have a wash for men um mm. because a lot of women were complaining that you know they'd be given fellatio and then their man's penis smelled very weird um and it wasn't because it, it was it had a stench to it but more so they could smell the chemicals from the soap that they were using mm. And so it's really important that you watch what you're using down there, fellas, because your penis is going into your woman. And, you know, especially if you're not using condoms. And even if you are using condoms, you know, condoms also have certain chemicals in it as well. So just being careful what type of condoms that you're using and what type of KY jelly you're using as well, um, which I also have a water-based lubricant that's organic. Um, so it's not going to change a woman's pH system um, because that's very important for us getting a ph balanced soap um something that is going to make sure that we don't get yeast infections or bacterial vaginosis so what men use down there is very important bronner's is great uh because it's organic i recommend that to a lot of men mm -hmm. um and with the shaving though know, just be careful because sometimes you can nick yourself mm. And then um, if you put coconut oil over it, it can kind of clog up your uh, glands in your skin. But besides that, I mean, um, if you have just shaved, just kind of let your skin breathe a little bit before you put anything on top of it. But that's a great regimen. Bronner's Brothers is amazing. And it smells good and it tastes good yeah. if you're going down there on your man. So sure. Bronner's definitely changed the game for me. And um, yeah, stop yeah you did good. Yeah, for sure. Um, I stopped using razors. I use like the same thing you use, like to cut your hair. Is what I use down there because I find like I could put a guard on it and get it to the exact thing that I want it without having to deal with any like nicking or stuff like that. And right. I, like like with ingrown hairs, I had to deal with those as, as much as I did before, like getting waxes and stuff like that. And, and we appreciate like, when men manscape because I mean we got to put our mouths down there, and you know you're inserting. You're inside of us. So, I mean, if y'all want it to look nice, we also want it to look decent. No, for sure. For sure. You also mentioned a, a, a wash that you, that you have. Is that something that you make or is it something that you re recommend? Like, like a, yeah, no. So I actually have a wash that I made. Um, it was really just for a client because she was complaining about her man's groin area. And I was like, well, I could probably come up with something um, because it was just something that I had given my boyfriend and he liked it so much. And then I started getting more orders and stuff for more women were interested in getting for their man. So I do have a wash. And even for my single fellas, you know, that don't have a woman, but just want to keep it clean down there. And um, or let's say you know, you're headed to some chick's house and you need to freshen up really quickly. You can even use it dry. So you just put it on, use it on your scrotum, your mm -hmm. groin area, mm -hmm. and you can wipe it off with a towel, a paper napkin. So it works very well. And I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. So um, yeah, it's definitely on my website, drmbs.com, if you guys are interested in ordering any. Yes, indeed. I would definitely tap in with you for sure. Maybe tap into that. You know, find, find any, 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 yeah, any. when you guys come to Atlanta, I'll give you guys, or I'll send you guys some if you, you know you're not coming to Atlanta anytime soon. <laughs> we were I know he told me y'all was out here. I'm low key upset that y'all didn't hit me up, but that's I cool. I understand. I, I know y'all was probably in these streets. So, <laughs> Yo. okay. I know you guys <laughs> were. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no. Are both of you guys single? I had no idea that you were in Atlanta. I had no idea you were there. So, yeah, I'm uh, in Atlanta. Yeah. She was in Atlanta. He, he knew I was in Atlanta. He knew. 
Yes, he yeah. Did. Yeah, I, I forgot. Like, I really did. It was, uh, like I said, this weekend was a real blur. It really was. Yeah. Uh-huh. I bet it was. was. The weekend was really, really a blur. Like, like, like to, to put it in context, I'll say this. Between Saturday night and Monday morning, I didn't sleep. What was y'all here doing? Okay, we can talk off camera what y'all was out here doing. Because I'm very curious. <laughs> What y'all was doing, but I know because DC is still locked down. Because you know, I'm originally from DC, so I know DC is still locked down. Um, yeah, I was chilling. Um, <laughs> in Atlanta. wait, are you guys so for the ladies that want to know, are y'all single? Yes, yes. I guess we are. Yes, I am. Both single. of you guys are single. Yep, yep. Oh, wow, ladies, two educated, tall black men that are single. Mm, mm, mm. Oh. Two high value men right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yes, we, we appreciate we listen, we appreciate the, uh, the love for sure. Like, yeah, we 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 gotta tap in when we come back to Atlanta. We, you know, Atlanta was good to us and we will definitely be back. And we gotta tap in. Like I said, that was my fault. I I, I dropped the ball on that one. I definitely mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you, uh, I'm trying to tell you, yeah, it was, it was, when I say a blur, it's like, you know, it's like, damn, you know, Monday was here and it was, it was, you know, Monday was here and I was back in Texas. I said, damn. (laughs) Back to the grind, back to the grind. I get it. I get it. But we will be back and we will definitely tap in. Like that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. For sure. Um, And, you know, with that, you know, because I, with that i guess we can wrap up this episode we appreciate your time dr fuller um can you please give everyone your social media handles so they can follow you um i'm pretty sure some folks might want to slide in your dms to get more advice uh, on some of these questions that they had asked or products or products for sure um both of them absolutely um you can find me at dr dr dot canary c-a-n-a-r-y like the bird um you can also go to my website um dr d-o-c-t-o-r m-b-s.com if you need help with any counseling services and then i also have my mind body sex that's mind.body.sex where i'm schooling you on everything pertaining to sex and mental health we appreciate that. We appreciate that. And so I, I, I want to apologize. My camera went out of focus, so I had to. <laughs> I don't know what happened <laughs> at all. Yeah, it was. It was, it was all was, good, man. We 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 get we get and end the recording. So I to. And with that, we say peace. Peace. <laughs>